Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And hello, everybody. Here we are again. We have an amazing guest, Clinton Young. Hello. Woo. Hello. <laughs> <I'm Daniel. laughs> Wahoo. Okay. <laughs> Texas, uh, big, uh, what, what do they call those, the 10 gallon hats or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun here. So, yeah, we're going to have a great time. Um, Clinton is an amazing speaker and he has uh, amazing things to share with you about reigniting your. Uh, your human spirit. And so I'm going to go ahead and share with, with you more about him. And he's got an amazing story. You've got to hear his story. Um, I, when you hear his story about his own spiritual evolution and awakening, it's going to really inspire you. And he also is going to make, make things so much easier for you to, um, to be able to go to your next level of impact because he has these like secrets and principles that allow you to be yourself finally and really make the difference you want as a spiritual rock star. So I, I'm looking forward to everything he's got to share. Clinton Young is an award-winning international keynote speaker, world-class coach for aspiring speakers and founder of the Speaker Posse, recognized by Ari uh, Ariana Huffington's Thrive Global as Top 12 speaker to inspire you. He recently has spoken to over 45,000 people at premier entrepreneur groups, associations, corporations, and universities across North America and Europe. Clinton has over 20 years of diverse experience as a top leader in both corporate and entrepreneurial positions. His experience ranges from director level corporate roles in recruiting, training, and development, and international business consulting to owning businesses in direct sales and marketing, real estate investing, and professional speaking and training. So very diverse, you know, very diverse. Clinton's vision is to be a major catalyst for causing a global tipping point in possibility consciousness by December 31, 2029, which is a very uh, top of mind date for me as well. So we'll talk about that. He's on a mission to empower an army of 1,000 aspiring wonderful speakers to launch their speaking business and share their unique message with the world. He's currently writing his new book, Reigniting Your Human Spirit. It takes courage to live your dream life now, not later, now. About next year. All right. Clinton and his wife reside in San Diego, California. We're talking about that too, and enjoying traveling the world and experiencing philanthropic adventure travel. That sounds amazing with fellow growth, uh, growth seekers. And you can see Clinton, Clinton speak at uh, www.clintonyoung.com. So Clinton, just, um, just again, a pleasure to have you here. And um, What's yeah? What's uh, what's the sunshine and in, uh, in into your life these days? Uh, what's what's new? Let's let's start there real quick. Just for yeah, absolutely, Daniel. You know, I I have to say I gave you a mouthful there to share up front. <laughs> you did a wonderful job, and I I hope that that whole ten gallon hat on the front end wasn't referencing my big dome here. Maybe I need to step back, <laughs> step back from the microphone here because I share this story in my 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 keynote speech, reigniting the human spirit that I been fortunate enough to share all around the world. And I share a story called skinny kid with a big head. Okay. And that little skinny kid used to be me. So hope you're not talking about my big head there, Daniel, with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just having fun. Just I know. Because we have this fun energy flowing and glowing. Yeah. And it's like, wahoo. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, that's, I'm in San Diego, like you said, and it is sunny here. And I know it's not sunny everywhere right now. I'm from Massachusetts, depending on where you're listening in today, you know, the Northeast of the United States, and it is cold up there and it's getting colder. Uh, so I'm very, very blessed to be here in the sunshine. And I find that, you know what, whether it's sunny or not, we ought to smile because what else is there, right? I mean, having fun is, you know, that's, that's what life's about. So yes, I'm having a great time today. It's awesome. And Thank you for having me as well. Yeah. And um, we met what, a couple of years ago or so at a, an event. And um, 
just really enjoy connecting with you. And, um, and so, and we, uh, you know, it's funny, we were talking about Les Brown before we came on the show. He was right. the speaker at that event. He was, you're right. That was, what, that was my opportunity to say, I shared the stage with Les Brown. because You so, did. Yeah. You spoke at so, that event. Yeah, which is a good speaker tip, right? If you totally. happen to be on stage with somebody that's well known, you want to advertise that that fact. Absolutely, it does help uh, things to pop more for you. And but it, uh, you know, you you've impacted lots of people. You've shared your um, your energy and your you know sp speaking voice and uh, your wisdom and everything with you know countless people. Uh, yet you know you didn't start off. Uh, as a blaze of fire, I can feel that because I'm intuitive. So I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, it didn't start off that way. Right. So tell us a little bit about your background and what really kind of awoken your human spirit and yeah. led you to doing all this amazing work in the world. Because you do have a very spiritual uh, path into the work that you've done, and you, you do very spiritual work in a sense to me um, in, in how you do it. So. Yeah, you know, it definitely, definitely didn't start that way. I, I am an international keynote speaker and I'm a coach for mission-driven entrepreneurs and aspiring speakers that have this burning desire to get their message out there to the world. But it didn't all start right there, right? I didn't start at that level. Uh, in fact, one of my first, this, I'm going to share with you a quick story. I wasn't planning on sharing this. I'll share a quick story about how I became a speaker, how I started and to show you where I came from, and then we'll, we'll dive into really the spiritual awakening that has set me on this, this path and this vision and mission mm -hmm. of creating a global tipping point and possibility consciousness and creating an army of world-class speakers to help me in that process. So my first speaking gig, okay, it wasn't exactly planned, Daniel. Picture this, okay? Picture this. So I'm in this office. I have a mentor. His name is Justin, okay? And every week, this is when I first became an entrepreneur. This was 2005 to 2006 timeframe. So I'm in Orange County, California, and I'm in this office. And every week, Justin would hold a presentation. We'd have about 40 people in the conference room. And I'd be in the audience as, you know, just being a good audience member, shaking hands, kissing babies, giving high fives, and just, you know, making a good environment. Today, this day, we walk up, okay? We're walking towards the room. And picture this, it's all glass walls, floor to ceiling glass walls, floor to ceiling glass door, 40 people in that conference room, packed in there like sardines. All of a sudden they see us come, every single one of their heads goes whoop and turns to the left and looks right at us. Right at that moment, Justin turns to me, he flips me the clicker and he says, you're on today, buddy. And he opens the door and walks into the room. And I'm left standing there, Daniel, just like, what just happened? So that's the beginning of my speaking career. I step in the room and I am like quaking in my boots. My voice is quivering. I've got sweat running down my brow. My stomach's all tight. And I am fumbling my way through that presentation. It is a train wreck, Daniel, like train wreck. Anyone out there can hopefully somebody can relate with me out there, or maybe you at least have the fear right, of speaking. Right. I believe it's the number one fear in the world over death. So right, just right, right. folks, an <laughs> idea of that. Um, so that's how it all began. Now I, I ended up settling in and I started to recall some of the things Justin had shared and I, I did okay, but that day, that day would prove to be a pivotal moment in my life. You see, Justin, believed in me and he saw something in me that I didn't yet see in myself. So if anyone out there listening or watching uh, has something that they really, 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 really want to be, to do, to have, and they don't quite believe it's possible, it's so vital to find people like yourself, Daniel, or other mentors that they can lean on and look to and help borrow the belief of you or of their other mentor in them until they can build up and develop enough confidence and courage to take on and own that belief for themselves. And that day with Justin in that room, when I'm quaking in my boots, I learned two things. The first thing I learned was growth is never easy, but it's always worth it, right? Growth is never easy, but it's always worth it. And I also learned, like I said, 
I needed to borrow the belief in Justin and me. And that was the day that I, I didn't become a world-class speaker that day by any stretch, but the fire was lit. I was like, there's something here. And I ended up having a pivotal, really quantum leap in my confidence level of what was possible, not in my abilities yet, but in my confidence. So that's kind of how I started. And I don't know if you have any follow up on that questions, or I can share with you. Well, I think you know, I the would next part to... is the reigniting. Go ahead. Yeah, Please. I just want to share something about that yeah. is that people can relate to that fear and that um, I, I know whatever, you know, probably all the way back to when I had to talk in school that there was something inside me that felt like, whoa, like I want to share, but was very yeah. nervous and mm -hmm. had a lot of hard, very hard time talking. And that actually continued to happen, you know, even, even in, as an adult. And yeah. even while I've been an entrepreneur and doing business, it's like I get up sometimes, like it's like I used to it, you get on those bigger stages. It could even yeah. be 50 people or whatever, but you get on this bigger stage and it's like, whoa, you know, especially for people listening, they're sensitive beings, typically they're empathic mm. people, not all of them, but most of them. And they feel a lot of energy from the audience and it makes you yeah. nervous. Like, oh, 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 you start acting all goofy and do all yeah. that stuff. They tell you not to do a Toastmasters and, and it's terrifying. And most people feel like they're not very good at speaking. Like they, they even evaluate themselves probably worse than they are, right? So what we need to do is, is to, and then people go so unconscious in their speech as well. Yeah. We don't know even what we're doing wrong a lot of times as well. There's also that and another whole. So I'm very passionate about this subject of speaking. I'm really looking forward to diving into it. But I just want to tell people like, hey, if Clinton started off as a hot mess and you feel like you're a hot mess, <laughs> trust me, you're going to be amazing. Clinton's, you know, known as one of the top speakers out there. Yeah. And I'll just give a quick tip before we move on about like when you feel that feeling if you're about to give even a speech to one person on Zoom or on YouTube, if you're going to do a video as a spiritual entrepreneur, I'm sure you're trying to get your message out there more and more. Or if you're on stage, one thing that I found that really helps is when we shift our concern from ourselves to the audience members, right? And there's a real easy way we can do that. We want to shift our concern from us because a lot of times we're in our head and we're thinking, oh, am I going to remember what I was going to say? Or am I going to add enough value? Or are they going to like what I have to say? Or am I going to remember what I was supposed to say? Right? So like all these things are going through our head and that's all about me. That's all about you. That's all about us. That's not about the audience. So we shift our concern to sit in the proverbial seat of our audience members and really think about what is the collective pain that this audience has like, like not like pain, like, Oh, I'm a marketer and trying to find their pain. No, it's like from your heart. Like, yeah. how can I serve this person? How can I help this person? And I, I find that I ask myself, I say this one thing and it shifts it all for me. So this is what the tip I want to give folks. And that is, I say, Clinton, you're about to do something of significance. Right. And then I say myself, I'm about to do something of significance because every single time as mission-driven entrepreneurs or spiritual entrepreneurs, every time we get an opportunity to get on a stage or to hold a microphone or to be in front of someone like yourself, an influencer in the podcasting space, it's an honor. Every time we get that opportunity, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and it's actually a responsibility. Once we say yes, we have the responsibility as well to actually provide value. And we can't do that from our head. We can only do that from our heart. So when we say that, I'm about to do something of a significance, it allows me to drop from my head down into my heart and speak to their heart. And that is how we get connected with our audiences. And that's how we, one of the ways we become world-class as well. Yeah, and I think a lot of times we've got our speech memorized and we're trying mm. to remember our notes or you know, yeah. even if it's just bullet points, we're still like, okay, and then am I, am I going to keep it on time? And there's a million things you're thinking about. And, you know, if you're not connected to your heart and your body and, you know, deeper inside yourself, then, you, you know, if you're not connected with yourself, then you, it's hard to connect with the audience. You know, it's really hard to connect with the audience, no matter how good your speech is polished with words, right? So you have to have that inner connection in order to really have a deeper connection with the audience. 
and mm -hmm. but we feel so terrified. I mean, let's get back to the fear and for a second here. It's like the fear overtakes us. So if you don't know how to steady your energy, you you haven't learned how to do that. Maybe you haven't got the you haven't got some uh, support on that or gotten the, the right tips yet um, or move through, you know, really move through those fears. I mean, in, yeah. in a number of ways and that it just overtakes you. And then you just feel like you, you, people literally can freeze on stage. It happens to people I even experience at times. Yeah. Like all of a sudden it's like blank. Like, I don't know what to say. And I want to say something about this, Clint, that relates to our audience very much. Yeah. And so many of our people listening, they know this. You, you in this life and past lives have been like, hey, shut up. You know, you're, you're, you don't know what you're talking about, or we don't like what you're saying. We're going to lynch you, you know, like, like yeah. again, past life stuff. Most of the people I've done energy scans for that are like light worker type of people or spiritual uh, entrepreneurs and stuff, they tend to have had past lives where they're persecuted for their voice, for sharing what they came to share. And so it's like, you put a muzzle on your voice. So when you get up in front of one, it's like, it's like, almost like oh my God, I come with the torches and burn me at the stake. Yeah, so it's in that's ourselves, one of the reasons right? why, you know, it's the number one fear out there yeah. it, because of these deeper, you know, anxieties and fears. And so the more you can share about how people can get through that, and eventually we're going to get to that story about your awakening. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got one more great tip based on what you just said. I'll give you another another great tip here about that energy, right? Because I've been on thousands of stages. I've been very, very fortunate to get on some great stages all around the world for the last several years. And, mm -hmm. and what I'm here to say is that that fear, it, it doesn't go away. That, that, I should say that feeling. That, that tingly feeling, you can probably feel it, you can probably conjure it up right now of a moment when you had to raise your hand, you had to say something, or you had to stand in front of a group and say, you get that the tingly feeling in your body. It's a physiolog physiological thing that's happening. So get this, Daniel. When we are walking down a path, right? You're in the Chicago land area. I'm sure there's hiking paths out there, just like here in San Diego or wherever you're listening out there in the world. And you come across the bear you're going to have a certain fight or flight experience in your body, this physiological response, and you're going to get this tingly feeling in your body. Okay. Remember that feeling. Let's now fast forward. Now we're, we're, we're safe. We made it out of there alive. Now we're in a plane and we're getting ready to jump out of this plane. And we're really excited. We get to the edge of that. And this is something we really want to do. And we, we named this other thing danger, right? With the bear danger, danger. Not that there's not danger in a plane. Don't get me wrong. But when we're in that plane, we, we name it excitement. We name it like, wow, this is exciting. It's the same exact physiological response, the same exact, like, like, same exact psychology is going on, same exact uh, uh, neurons are firing and, the, and all the, everything, all the chemicals are being pushed around in your body. The fight or flight response is happening. We just called it something else. We defined it as danger versus excitement. So when we become world-class speakers, all we need to do, part of becoming world-class is we deepen our level of awareness. So when we deepen our level of awareness of what's actually happening in our bodies, we realize, wait a minute, this is just that tingly feeling again. I'm going to name this passion, excitement. And you define it something empowering instead of defining it as, oh my goodness, this is, I am so scared. I'm going to like walk out there and fall on my face type fear and danger because it's not danger. It's just an opportunity, right? So mm -hmm. be careful what you define in terms of the feelings that you're feeling. And I, one last thing on that is um, uh, Maya Angelou says, and this speaks back to uh, how we want to connect with the hearts of the audience, right? People don't remember what you say. So don't memorize your speech. Don't give a bunch of data and a bunch of facts. People don't remember what you say. People don't even remember what you do, but they always remember how you make them feel. That's what Maya Angelou says. One of my favorite quotes of all time. So that's why we tell more stories. We don't give a bunch of facts. I always say when I hear somebody speech, I'm like, take like 70% of those facts out. Some people in the audience do need facts, so leave some in, but tell more stories. Become a world-class storyteller because that's how you connect to the hearts and open up the hearts and minds of your audience. You got to connect with them and make them feel good first. Right, right. I mean, that you're right. That's exactly right. I remember when I was working at a job once many years ago before I got into all this stuff, 
I was, I was a counselor and all that. And mm. they had that up. They'll always remember how you feel, how you made them feel. So I remember that being up and that stuck with me. I'm like, I got, I want to remember that. That's, that's yeah. important. That's a writer down or something to remember. It and is. yeah, the storytelling is so fascinating because I remember saying to you even before I came on, I'm like, I know you're going to tell great stories because that's what great speakers do. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's just inherent. Like every great speaker we know for the most part, probably almost without exception, they all tell stories. They all mm -hmm. tell stories, you know, and that's what people love. They love to hear the stories and people don't, you know, again, probably half the audience or probably in my case, over half the audience doesn't like, like a Donald Trump, but one of the things that his audience does love about him is he does tell stories and he oh, can tell okay, the yeah. same story. I don't listen to his speeches really, but like he'll tell, he'll can tell the same story again and again, just like any other great speaker. And every single time they will absolutely eat it up and love it. And it builds connection rather than like, well, we heard that story. All right. And I know that's true for me as a speaker too. If I keep telling my same stories in my same audience, they don't know those i don't think they get bored of it i think they, they yeah. continue to gain from it like the repetition right because of totally. they're still packed into a story so i, I totally i totally uh, agree with that like, i'm grateful that you're sharing that it's so true i mean there, it's the power of storytelling there's science behind it as well for our, our science folks out there who do like data because i know some of some people listening they do like data and they want to know and by the way i'm sort of a uh, uh, I geek out on psychology. Okay. I've, I have a bachelor's in psychology, a master's in organizational psychology, and I have been geeking out on neuroscience for like the last 15, 20 years. So I'm not the foremost expert out there, but I know more than the average person. Okay. That's just a little bit of credibility here when I share this science. Um, but there's science behind storytelling. And I'll just, I'll share this to, to, to close this part off. But, you know, when you're telling a story, when you're telling facts, now, for those of you who can't see me, just visualize this for a moment, right? You have brain waves. Your brain waves are going up and down and up and down and up and down like a wave. And your audience, when you're telling facts, the audience brain waves are going at an opposite. They're not matched up with yours. They're at an opposite interval going up and down, up and down, up and down. If you can visualize two different ones side by side and they're at different paces, different heights, et cetera. As soon as you start telling stories, the audience's brain waves sync up with your brain waves. So from a science, and there's been science that proves this. So from a scientific uh, explanation or reason, I don't know what it is, right? But when you tell stories and you've done it, you've been on stages, I know a lot, and a lot of the listeners have as well, at least on a couple stages, if not a lot, you notice when as soon as you start telling a story, people lean in, don't they? Mm -hmm. they lean in, they put their phone down, right? They're not getting up, going to the bathroom. You go back into the data and the facts and the details, Boom, the wearing waves, they disconnect. And now they start checking their phones. And not that that's not important. I'm not saying that stories is all there is. But if you're not learning how to become a world class storyteller, and you're a mission driven entrepreneur, and you have a, a message, or a product or a service that you know, can make a big difference in the world, you owe it to yourself to become a world class storyteller. And that doesn't mean you're going to tell hour long stories. Stories come in story format with a full start, beginning, middle, and end. They come in case study format. They come in testimonial format, all the way down to analogies, similes, metaphors. I am even going to share a six word story at the very end of our conversation. When you ask me, what are your final thoughts? I'm going to share you a six word story that you're going to get powerful meaning from. So it doesn't have to be a long story. That's not what I mean. Right, but you've got to become masterful and world class in your storytelling if you want to make the level of impact that you deserve to make. So let's dial in a story. Tell us about your story of awakening, and then yes. we can talk about. We can kind of break down like a couple of the things you did with it that sure. helped to make it powerful the, the way you share it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, so 2010. Well, first of all, let's back it up. 2008, Daniel, we all know what happened out there in the world. We had the global financial crisis, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been working with Justin, my mentor, for a few years at that point. First time I ever made six figures, right? That was important to me when I was young, was back in my 20s. And the first time that I had this sort of time flexibility, and I didn't have it all figured out. I wasn't financially free 100%, but I had a pretty great life, right? Mm -hmm. 2008 happens. All of a sudden. I lose my property. 
my business crumbles in three months. I lose my whole business and I lose my credit score six months after I get married, right? Welcome to the team, honey, right? <laughs> we are still married, by the way, 12 years later, 13 years later, whatever, I think it's 12 years. And uh, don't tell my wife, I didn't have the exact number there. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward a year and a half from that, and I'm in, I'm in this seminar and I'm at the microphone actually. So picture there's 200 people all around. I'm at the microphone. I'm certainly not leading the seminar, okay? I am shattered, Daniel. My confidence is shattered. I am lost, right? I'm sure some people listening can relate. And perhaps even right now with the pandemic going on, I'm sure a lot of people are in a similar potential situation with either their business or their job or, or whatnot. So this is where I was about 12 years ago and uh, exactly 10 years ago, I'm in this seminar and I am just like, I am totally fumbling at this mic and I don't, I don't know what to do. And the, the seminar leader, he looks right at me. His name is Chris. And he says, Clinton, you're dead inside. And it was just like, Ugh! it was like a stake to the heart. Right. But he was speaking right to my soul. Like he knew what was going on with me more than I knew. And it was that moment that I had this, this sort of spiritual awakening. And I realized, see, I had always been somebody who trusted my intuition, right? And I know everybody, most likely everybody listening to this knows what I'm talking about when I say intuition, but just in case to make sure we're on the same page, right? I would always, as, even as a kid, before I even knew what intuition was, I would always have a thought and have a feeling, more of a feeling than a thought, but I would have this sort of experience in my body and my soul and my mind. It would be like, oh, go do that. And I had no idea why, but I would go do it and things would work out. And I didn't even have the level of consciousness to be able to notice that I had a feeling and then I went and did it and it worked out. It just, I just look back at it now and that's, that's what happened. And so another example, after I had a, a job in Boston for several years, um, I had this intuition to go and visit a friend in Singapore. And I ended up traveling all through Southeast Asia with her and it, it lit a fire of passion for culture. And that's what ultimately brought me back to grad school to get my graduate degree. So I'd always been somebody that did that. And that's sort of my model for how the world worked, right? Before I even knew, before I was even conscious of it, that's just how my model of my world worked. And in that moment at the microphone, when he said, you're dead inside, I realized I failed my intuition. But really, I actually thought at that moment, my intuition failed me. You see, I had bought properties in 2005, and they were chomping on my arms and legs like an alligator. I would bought these properties. And in that moment, I, I, I was like, wait a minute, did my intuition fail me? Did my intuition fail me? Maybe that's why I'm shattered. Maybe that's why I'm, I don't have confidence and I don't know what I want all of a sudden. And, and I'm sure people out there listening can, can maybe, maybe relate. Like they, maybe some people don't know what they want. Like they know they bound, they're bound for greatness. They want something more. They want to be something more and do something more and have, have more in their life, but they don't even know what it is. A lot of times people say I'm confused, right? I run into this all the time and I was there. That's how I can, I can see it so quickly and so easily. And so I think that my intuition has failed me because it let me buy these properties. And about a week later, I'm off doing, I, I have these different habits that I do. I call them black sheep habits because not a lot of people are willing to meditate in public, for example, right? Or, or uh, visualize, or, you know, probably some of the folks listening to this call or this um, uh, podcast or video are willing to do that. But a lot of the general people out there aren't. So I'm practicing one of these and I, I'm meditating, I'm taking walks in nature and I'm contemplating and letting things bubble up. And that's what I'm doing in this moment. I'm, I'm taking a walk in nature and all of a sudden it hits me, Daniel. I'm like, holy cow my intuition didn't fail me. I failed my intuition. And I, and that's when I was just cracked open. I literally was moved to tears that I failed my intuition. 
I remembered in that instant, in, the, in that walk in the woods, I remembered in that instant that my intuition was saying, Clinton, don't buy these properties. These guys are not the right people to be doing business with. It's not the right time. You haven't done the research. You're doing this for all the wrong reasons. And man, you would think that that would have just solved everything. And all of a sudden my intuition is restored and I'm back to living a great life. But no, that was the beginning of a seven year journey. And there are still things 10 years later that I'm noticing and deepening my level of awareness around. But that was the beginning of me realizing that that light that I had in me, right? That sort of pilot light under the stove, if you will, under the gas stove. We all know there's these little pilot lights. Well, my light had gone out or it was at very most, it was flickering. So I had to reignite my human spirit. A lot of people ask me, why is your speech called reigniting the human spirit? Why isn't it just igniting? And it's because of what I just said. My light had gone out. We're all born with a light. Little kids were running around like anything's possible because anything is possible. Everything is possible. And all of a sudden something happens. I talk about this a lot in my keynote speech where we, we become, where our limiting beliefs stem from. Right? We have this little kid confidence, this little kids, anything's possible. And then something happens. And then we, unfortunately, because our brain is still developing, we file it away in our unconscious, but we make it mean something that it doesn't actually mean. Kind of like when you approach the bear in the woods versus you're in the, uh, the plane versus you're on stage, we might assign that feeling as danger, but really it's just excitement, right? As little kids, we assign something didn't go right. It might be a traumatic event or it might be something very totally benign in a normal happenstance in life, but we make it mean I'm not good enough mm -hmm. or it's not fair or the world's not safe, right? These are things, that's, that's the very basic way to explain how our limiting beliefs are formed. And I don't know why I went off on that little tangent, but I felt like, felt like sharing that in the moment. But that was the day that I realized that I had to reignite my human spirit, right? I had to reignite it. And then along that pathway, I discovered my purpose. And I, perhaps I can share with you later on how I discovered my purpose and maybe some, some ideas for your listeners. Of, because I know a lot of people want to have more purpose and more meaning in their life, right? And I discovered that my purpose is to reignite the human spirit, not just my human spirit, but the human spirit collectively. And that's why my vision for the world, Daniel, is to co-create and co-cause because I know I'm not Neo. I'm not the one, right? <laughs> I can't do it all by myself, but to co-create and co-cause this, this, this tipping point, this global tipping point in possibility consciousness. So more people are walking around saying, I can do this. I can create whatever I want than the, the vice versa of that, the opposite right. of that, right? right. So that's why I have that as a vision to reignite the human spirit, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I mean, cause that is, that's a quite a powerful story. I mean, uh, to experience be, you know, being crushed that way, because a lot of your sense of esteem came from, I'm sure from your success you had had. And then, yeah. and then the financial loss and the sense of shame and like, I, I'm, mm. I'm pathetic, I'm worthless or whatever the things that go through people's brains in those times, I yeah. think even, well, maybe as much for women. I don't know. I know for the male ego, it definitely goes there. And, um, you, you feel like you're just you know, like, what's wrong with me. Right. So, yeah. um, but yeah, it's interesting that you came to that conclusion because a lot of people say, oh, I totally followed my intuition. It didn't work. I hear that mm. all the time, right? And the truth is, is there always was another voice that was saying, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, no. My guys <laughs> are telling me. I know it. Something in you somewhere was telling you something else. And yeah. it, it's really where it all synergizes with this idea with speaking too. Like you have to listen with all your being. You can't just parcel out because I channel things all the time and like, oh, let's go walk around the world today. And I'm like, uh, yeah, something else inside me says no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and some people would say, but you got your intuition. You should have listened to God. You should have done. Nah, I don't know about that. You know, like some there's 
there's these different aspects of ourselves and when something's really true you get more of a full a full like yes you know it's more of a full yes um when something's really especially with the bigger decisions is uh, there's yeah. more of a full yes there might be fear there might be like i don't want to do it I, can i get around it and, but there's more of a full yes somewhere inside you so it's one to say that's a whole other training in itself right but yeah this ability to really be in tune with yourself also relates to being in tune with life and in tune with audiences and yeah. all kind of one thing. And I feel like, you know, in your own way through helping people speak, you're helping on so many levels because you're helping to awaken them through this, this through the, the talking you do. In this case, if people do speaking training with you, they're, you know, they're attuning themselves in that way. And yeah. they're reigniting their spirit. The part of them says, no one will listen to me or what, you know, who am I and all that stuff. You're helping them, some part of them knows better, right? So you're helping ignite that part of themselves so they can yeah. make the difference they've come here to make and do their, their purpose, whatever that is, and mm. make that impact and be those world-class speakers, meaning that they're really coming from that attuned place within them is how I hear it. Uh, yeah. 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 And I like to say, you know, when you say you, you feel it from a deeper place, your intuition, I like to say, follow the tingles. That's another writer downer that I, I love to say, follow the tingles, right? When we, a lot of times we'll have an actual physical feeling when something's right. That's why when somebody says something, this is my belief, right? You, you decide if it's true or not. This is my belief that when somebody says something and we get those tingles or that feeling, uh, there's usually there's usually some uh, uh, some words that maybe encompass that. It's either it's usually a feeling that this is right, mm -hmm. right? You might also have a feeling that's a little more odd or off-putting, and that's generally going to be oh, this is wrong. And it's it's a real simple. Did it feel good? It's probably right. Mm -hmm. Did it feel bad? It's probably the wrong thing, right? Mm -hmm. To get really simple, simplify this to the to the nth degree. And I say, follow the tingles, man. And, and don't, and don't let your fear, we've got to learn to, to be courageous and step into our fear because that's where the magic happens. I always say that too. The magic happens at the intersection between our faith, knowing that anything's possible and our faith, knowing that we want that thing. It would be a cruel joke of God or spirit or Allah or whatever you believe in. It would be a cruel joke by that higher power that you believe in for, for you to be able to have a vision of something and not actually have the potential to achieve it. It would be a cruel joke on humanity, right? So it's my belief that when you have that vision, it's already done. It's already possible. All you need to do is line up with it and step into your fear. And the magic happens between the knowingness that it's possible, right? And the unknowingness of how to do it. You don't need to know the how. The magic happens in between there, the knowingness, that faith that it's possible and the unknowingness of how to actually do it. As soon as you step through that and you get in the middle of those two, boom, that's where the magic happens. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's that stepping into it is, <laughs> is a big one for a lot of people for sure, just yeah. to, to move through that. And, you know, every spiritual rock star, you know, kind of soul that I know, uh, it has is walking that is walking that and sometimes even when we're uh, people in the eyes of the world we've already been successful wow you're doing such big things you don't know what people are facing they may be walking their <laughs> dark night of the soul that day you know yeah. that day they may feel like i can't go one more day they're already worldwide known they're already you know done all these things they still it's so it's ongoing process is another thing yes. i want to tell people it's, it's a way of it's, 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 it's a way of being, I almost want to say, you have to keep walking that. Otherwise, you know, you always hold yourself back. You always like, okay, let's reel it back in. Okay. And then what happens is things crumble anyway, you know, like the, you're afraid of losing things, then things start. Uh, it's, uh, oh, wow. What happened? My business is going down now or, or whatever. It's like, if you don't continue to follow the tingles and actually get through the fear of actually following through on it, that just comes back to get you anyway. You can't get around it. And so really just being direct with it and just allowing yourself to move through it is the best thing. And that, again, is a great metaphor for speaking. You've got all this excitement, right? No, there isn't a bear about to get you. Just reinterpret like it is excitement. I've said that for years to people. It's excitement. You know, 
anxiety and fear. It's just excitement, really. You're just calling it fear. You can do this. Just, just show up in that energy. Let that energy be the power that you're bringing into it then. And then when you do that, it's very impactful. It lights up a room, right? Yes. So, so it, it, and it's the same thing with everything else in our life. So it, I love these metaphors. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, one other thing that I'll, I'll share, you know, a lot of people ask me, uh, how do I find my purpose? Right. And I know a lot of people listening, maybe they're on their purpose or maybe they're very purpose driven, but they haven't discovered their purpose yet. So I like to share this with your group. Um, so many people ask me, how do I find my purpose? And I say something that kind of stops them in their tracks. I say, if you're looking for your purpose, stop. <laughs> and I say, it will be waiting for you when you start doing the things that you love, right? It'll be waiting for you when you start doing the things that you love. What I mean by that is as you start to do things that you're passionate about, and that you have interest in. And even if it has nothing to do with your business, right? If we're talking to entrepreneurs, let's say, even if it has nothing to do with your business, do things that put you in what I call a state of flow, that state of ease, that state of you could do it all day long and time flies by and it feels good when you're doing it. And you even get the tingles probably when you're doing it at times. And you're in your highest and best use, if you will, to use a real estate term. I speak a lot to real estate audiences. But if you're, if you're in your, your highest and best use, if you will, you're adding the most value to anyone that you're, you're interacting with because you're having fun. You're in your flow, right? It's the path of least resistance. Not that it's easy, but there's a sense of ease and grace. Find opportunities to put yourself in that state. Because as we do that, we are, to talk more about vibration, we're all vibrational beings, right? We elevate our own vibration whenever we're doing that. And when we're doing that, we're now more receptive. We can see more clearly and we're more connected to our source and opportunities for communication with your source are going to happen. Your intuition is gonna to speak to you and you're, you'll, you'll have opportunities, you'll have people, things will be revealed to you in that process. So that's why I say, if you're looking for your purpose, stop. It'll be revealed to you when you start doing the things that you love. And also, I feel it's my belief that we all actually have the same purpose, right? It's my belief, right? It's that we all have the same purpose. Now, you might have a different wrapper on your purpose. You might have a different color of your purpose. You might have a different shade or, or accent to your purpose. But ultimately, I feel that our purpose is to be in service to others inside of our greatest gift, right? I feel that our, our collective purpose is to be in service to other people inside of our greatest gift. What do I mean by that? I mean, do the things that bring us joy, that bring us life, right? When we're able to do those things and our purpose is revealed to us along the way, that is our purpose to be at that high vibration, doing things that we're great at, that, that have, there's ease and grace and there's, there's flow and find ways to provide value to other people while you're in that state. Mm -hmm. You know that warm, tingly feeling you feel? What, that I said, follow the tingles, right? You might also feel it when you're listening to a piece of music that you're moved by, right? Or a movie that moves you to tears, that warm, tingly feeling. You, you, you can kind of feel that feeling right now, right? You feel what I'm talking about, or you at least can, can gauge what I'm talking about. I believe that that feeling is why we're all alive. Right? I feel that the, as spiritual beings living this very human experience, I feel it's our right and it's our gift to experience that warm, tingly feeling and to find ways to give that feeling away, to give that feeling to other people. Now, I know that might be a little extreme, but that's, that's my belief. And I feel like it, it all ties together with being in service to others inside of our greatest gift. Don't look for your purpose. It'll be revealed to you when you start doing the things that you love and follow the tingles. Absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of that, I mean, one of the things I wanted to, um, we're going to have you share, you know, how people can learn more from you and connect with sure. you more in a moment. But first, there's a, uh, 
uh, one or two other things I want to do real quick first. So yeah. I just wanted to say that if people are following how you're sharing things, one of the things you're doing is you're sharing stories, but you keep saying, you know that feeling and you keep having people feel something, right? So yeah. she's know that feeling and then you'll come back and then you'll weave back like, oh, you remember when I talked about the bear and the airplane? And again, they're like, oh, I do remember that. And it's like, they come back to that and they keep anchoring all these things. And it's like building this connection with this whole thing that you're laying out. And then they're being more connected with the whole message and the energy. And then with you, you know, as well. Yeah. So all of that is all part of the master skills of speaking or they're actually pretty simple, but it, you know, there, there, there's, there, at least there's a tip of the iceberg, right? So there's so much more, but it's like, these are the things that we begin to learn to incorporate and to bring in, and you know, Clinton has not prefabbed this, this this today. You know, it's your you're just kind of following the flow, and yet you know these different things, and you're you're employing them. So, yeah. just to give you a credit for it, it was a great job you're doing. And then to a little bit of a teaching moment or an awareness moment. Some people already know some of these things, but like just helping people realize, oh, these are the things that Clinton's doing, and wow, those are, those are pretty powerful. Yeah, I love what you just you just illustrated perfectly what world-class, how you get to world-class. You see, to, to know and not do is not to know, right? And I didn't make that up. That's like an ancient Chinese proverb, I think. To know mm -hmm. and not to do is not to know, right? So becoming world-class, anything world-class, all it is is a deepened level of awareness. That really is all it is. And anything that's really, 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 really powerful in life, like principles, they're typically the most simple things. They're the most simple things. But when you don't have a deepened level of awareness on that simple thing, you don't do it. And to not do it is to not know it, if that makes sense. So to become a world-class speaker, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of things we can do. And we can actually accelerate our awareness. And I have a whole model, a three-step model to do that. Uh, and a five-step framework to becoming world-class, but that's not what the, that's outside of the scope of today's teaching. But, but ultimately I love how you illustrated that, that it is simple, but those callbacks and that weaving in, that's all how you become, that's all world-class. Somebody might know that, but if they're not doing it, they haven't reached that level of awareness yet. Right. right. So I invite everybody to one of the first things I always say to my speaking clients is, you got to speak, baby. A, when you speak, business happens. When you speak, mm -hmm. another writer downer, when you speak, business happens. Whether that means you get paid or whether that means you build a relationship or whether that means you provide value or you create more of a positioning for your expertise, when you speak, business happens. And B, that's the number one way in my three-step accelerated awareness model to actually deepen your awareness. You have to speak. You got to get repetitions. It's just like a, a gymnast or someone in karate. You don't just watch a book or watch a movie or read a book or watch a video or listen to one speaker and you become world-class. You got to get in the gym and do the repetitions. And every time you do the repetitions, you see more clearly and have a deeper level of awareness. You combine that with videotaping every single time you speak. I'll give you your, your group three tips here on how to become world-class. Again, simple, but if you're not doing it, you don't know it, right? Number two is videotape every single time you're on camera, every single time you're in front of a crowd, I should say. Whether that's live, whether that's on YouTube, literally watch your YouTube video or video record yourself giving an actual, doing a podcast or doing a Zoom video and watch the game tape. Do you think any world-class athlete, NFL football player, uh, 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 world football, right? Soccer all around the world. Do you think that they don't watch film? Every single game they watch film and they slow it down and they pause and they rewind. You watch the game tape. If you want to become world-class, you got to watch the game tape. And then the third thing is you've got to have a mentor. You've got to have somebody that's been there, done that, that's been on thousand stages or whatever else you're trying to become world-class at, right? And we're talking about speaking right now or a mission-driven entrepreneur with a message that wants to get their message out there more. Well, you've got to become world-class in order to do that. So have somebody that can see things in that video that you just can't see 
at your level of awareness, you just can't see it. It's all there. You just can't see it. So doing those three things, speak your face off, get as many reps as possible, get in the gym and pump it out, get on podcast after podcast after podcast. And I can help show you guys how to do this, right? And watch your game film, game film and hire a mentor, get a mentor that can see things you can't see. You will accelerate your awareness on your path to becoming world-class, like massive quantum leap, just doing those three things. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, that... <laughs> like that's that's so true it's like well how are you going to get good at it if you're not like constantly practicing your craft and then with the the film study and everything i love that analogy with sports for me as a guy like that watches sports so it's like oh yeah they're always talking about we are, we're gonna really take a look at that tape and they're always saying that and uh yeah so i yeah that is so true that is so I, true that i'm is playing so pickleball right now daniel it's a new sport if you haven't played it, you got to try it on a lighter note here, everybody. It's like the funnest sport ever. It's like ping pong and tennis had a baby and it's so easy to learn. It's growing so quickly because it's really fun. You can learn how to play in five minutes, literally. And you've got 10 year olds playing with 80 year olds and they can be at the same level. Like it's so much fun, but I've been watching film, not of myself. I've actually been watching other people play yeah. pros and I'm deepening my level of awareness. I can watch a film and go out and try something new. And all of a sudden I'm a better player just by watching even somebody else do it. That's better than me. So that's just another illustration of the importance. It's so simple, but we don't do it. Right. When we do, we deepen our awareness and we come one step closer to becoming world-class. And that's the only way we're able to make the level of impact as spiritual rock stars that we were born to make is by becoming world-class. That's my belief. And I'm sticking to it, Daniel. <laughs> I mean, when I've actually prepared to the max for, for, for my talks, that's when you have people jump up towards the stage and say all kinds of things. And one case they're like, can I have your notes? Can I actually like, take that home with me? Like, <laughs> yeah. like that's how good it can get. And, uh, and better, even better than that, but I'll, I'll save that for another time. Yeah. Clinton. So, and so people, yeah, this, oh yeah, we have to talk. Yeah, absolutely. How can people get on a pickleball? Now, I, Ed is so amazing because I've been hearing about it. It keeps coming on a pickleball. I just saw a, a pickleball court, I think, the, the last time I played tennis. And so, but yeah, that's that's interesting phenomena going on right now. And so fun. So there's, there's, have fun. Yeah, I think fun is so important. And they have fun on this journey of learning and exploring and deepening with your ability to be world-class with speaking. And don't let, don't let, let the, the fear is excitement, remember. The fear is excitement. And don't give me this, I can't do it, you guys are different, or other people are different. No, right. it's all a bunch of nonsense. The best, some of the best speakers were like like total nervous wrecks like Clinton. You know, they just had no yeah. mobility, it seemed at first at all for it almost. So <laughs> they had a lot of issues. So uh, take advantage of what Clinton has to offer. I know you wanted to share some some uh, principles or some a gift with them or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, if anybody wants to stay connected with me, you can find my main website just at clintonyoung.com. And I'm sure Daniel will probably put that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. That's just my primary website where you can see me speak um, and get connected. Um, and then also I have the, I have a gift I want to give everybody. Now I know not everybody on this call wants to be the next Les Brown. And to be honest with you, the people that I work with about 90% of them also don't want to be the next Brown. Some people do. They want to, and if you don't know Les Brown, he's one of the top motivational speakers on the planet in history. Uh, but a lot of them are just mission-driven entrepreneurs and potentially spiritual rock stars that have a product or a service. Maybe you're a coach, maybe you're a consultant uh, or an author, uh, or maybe you're a speaker, right? And you have this burning desire to share this message with the world. I want to give you a gift that can help you move towards becoming world-class. And I have over the last several years distilled down from thousands of hours on stages myself, from hiring some of the top speakers on the planet to be my coaches and my mentors, spending thousands and thousands and thousands, over $250,000 on my education, uh, not even including academic education. I'm just talking about personal development in the last 10, 15 years. 
and from coaching other speakers and mission-driven entrepreneurs how to become world-class. Through those three things, I've distilled down these top seven principles, not tips, principles, very, very different. Principles can be overlaid across anything, whether you're doing a YouTube video or a podcast or uh, speaking to a thousand people uh, on stage or one person face to face. These principles will allow you to move towards becoming more effective. What I mean by world class, just so we're on the same page, I shared this with Daniel before we got started. I want to make sure you know what I mean. I don't mean necessarily, you know, speaking all around the world and getting paid $10,000 per speech. I can definitely help you move in that direction if that's of interest. But what I'm talking about is how do you identify that invisible barrier that stands between you and your audience that holds you from, stops you from being connected? How do we identify that and dissolve that? so that we are truly connected with our audience and we create what's called an optimal learning environment for our audience to actually receive our message from our heart, our authentic, our vulnerable message, okay? That's what I mean by world-class. And these seven principles will help you move towards becoming that type of communicator. So hopefully that's enough of a setup to get people excited about it. And just to give you an idea, Daniel, just one of these out of the seven, just one of these, I invested over 5,000 US dollars for one of my coaches to teach me this one thing. And that one thing has allowed me to earn tens of thousands of dollars just from that one thing, plus move me into becoming a world-class speaker. So I'm giving you seven, just one of them I invested five over $5,000 in, okay? And I also have a bonus eighth that I'm going to give you as well. And you can get all of those for free at worldclassspeakersecrets.com. Again, that's worldclassspeakersecrets.com. I know it's a little long, worldclassspeakersecrets.com though. You get all seven of those plus the bonus eight for free. Outstanding. That sounds like a deal. <laughs> Can't be all right. Free. Yeah, yeah. Worldclassspeakersecrets.com. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I'm just so grateful having you here and um, definitely take advantage of that. Now, I will definitely take advantage of that. I'm going to check that out. I always want to learn more. And you make it so appealing. So I just irresistible. That's the point. Now, Clinton, I, one of the things I do during the show is I want to uh, just spend a minute or two to take some time to tune into you. I've done this before with you, but like yes. it's just to take a little time today um, just to tune into you and see if there's some messages I'm getting from my sense of my spirit to share with you that maybe um, give you some deepened awareness or reminders or something, right? Thank you. <laughs> I would love that. Would All love right. That. Great. Great. All right. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead, tune in and see what's, what's happening there. All right. Do you have some kind of a Qigong practice or anything like that? Or I have done Qigong and I love it, but I don't do it regularly. Ah, okay. Uh, my sense is they want you to get back into that. There's, there's okay. that connection that you build with Qigong that they're wanting you to get back into. Now, I've told you this before, but you've got a lot of magic and a lot of wizardry in you. And, you know, that Qigong practice helps you get in that connected flow with energy and it will help you just even be that much better, you know, with energetic mastery, right? So mm. energetic mastery, um, taking that deeper and deeper because um, that I feel is is part of your growth cycle is, is going deeper into that sort of mastery. Mm. Uh, let me see what else is coming up. I see like your head exploding and your voice like reaching even more people. So like that would represent to me, like there are some, um, you know, again, this is great because we want to share this with everybody. Like, it doesn't matter where you are, it's still stuff to work through. So there's a sense of like, just like, like any last limits in your brain about like even expanding further, like just to let those explode and just let those be released and just like, you know, next, that and the whole, the, the whole next level of, expression and sharing in the world. And that my feeling is that it is um, as big as you've visioned before. And in some respects, maybe it's, um, maybe it's even, 
it's bigger than what you've been able to land with and totally buy into yet. This is the feeling I get around it. So, so that's Love the it. next thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking see notes. It. Yeah, let's see if I get another one today uh, for you real quick. Um, just they're showing me your heart. They're just saying that you have a lot of um, ability to to be centered in your heart, to be that enlightened presence and, and um, that enlightened heart like really developing that even more because uh, that's like your like part of your master path in life is to deepen in that heart space and to share the love and they give me sort of the picture of G jesus comes to the mind but like um so you know i don't know if that directly connects to you but like i just comes to me that way it's this feeling of like that enlightened heart and mm -hmm. that that um again i keep getting like there's a deeper transmission that you're bringing even then maybe what you're aware of is as much as you are already aware of. So if that makes sense, yeah. So there's a wow. couple of things. Yeah, just a few couple of things for today. So yeah, any qu quick questions or any thoughts on that? Um, I'm loving it, like over here feverishly taking notes. Hopefully you can give me a copy of this bad boy as well. Um, love it, love it, love it. I resonated with every single thing you said. I do feel like my vision can be much larger than I think it even is. Although creating a, a global tipping point in possibility consciousness is pretty big. I think what I'm getting from it is I need to, I need to continue to believe that that's possible. Yes. Right? yes. And I do, but there, even me, like sometimes right. we teach what we need to learn the most, right? I teach reigniting your human spirit and unlocking your full potential. And part of the reason why I do that is because I'm so committed and so passionate about unlocking my own full potential. Right. And reigniting my own human spirit. And I'm so committed to helping other people do that as well. Right. So I need to continue to believe that I'm on the right path and know and trust and operate in faith and continue to take action. And everything I just taught, I just need to continue to do that. Yes. And let it unfold. Yes, that's all part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So everybody, if you want to check me out, you can go to yoursacredpurpose.com, yoursacredpurpose.com. And there's... Um, Currently, there's still an opportunity. I keep saying I'm probably going to change it soon. So, but there's an application there to meet with me to get an energy scan consultation uh, for 30 minutes. And then there's also the opportunity to get a free meditate, make money gift uh, meditation, which again, I've shared here so many times, really does work. It helps you line up and get those downloads every day to help you to make more money. So, so, all right. So as we close, yeah. Do you uh, want to go ahead and share that amazing six word story? Okay. How can you tell a story in six words? Clinton, I'm right. trying to know. I got to know. Well, y'all listen to what we just talked about for the last 45 to an hour or so. And it can all be summed up in six words. And these six words are really, I believe what I stand for. Right. And it's a message that if you just write these six words down, I have these on my bathroom mirror. And it encompasses a lot of what we talked about today and even more that we didn't get a chance to talk to today. And that is think big, say yes, and take action. Think big, say yes, and take action. And that's what I have to say. My name is Clinton Young, and it's been an absolute honor and pleasure to be here and share time with you, Daniel, and with all of your listeners. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, really, really a great pleasure. And everybody was so grateful for you listening in. You can just keep on listening. Man, we've got more and more amazing guests coming as well. And um, we're just so grateful for you. So you keep on, like I always say, keep on tuning in. We'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till next time, Woo. everyone. Woohoo. <laughs> You're listening to Spirits for Rockstar podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.